Okay, buddy. Let's do a little bit of review as we go into some new material. So, datum features on parts are used to establish our datums. And then we simulate those datums through datum simulation. That means that we take other things, other objects, our tools to simulate that perfect surface. Now these data features they can be flat surfaces, features of size, features of shapes, and even patterns if we want to. And there can be material boundary conditions and there's also an order to how things are controlled and that order if it's changed will change how it's controlled. Then all of this, all of this goes to make our datum reference frame from our datum features. Okay, so with that being said, let's talk about real life. So datum simulation is essential in industry because you have to make the fabrication and inspection operations in relationship to those datum features. This requires various things. It can be um, a quality piece of hardware, like that tool um, we we're talking about, um, like where you have this the, the very super flat table um, and blocks and other things that you're measuring with. Or what we're moving more towards right now is having you know coordinate measuring machines and the like, which are actually, you know, you take some machine. You know, here's my part, and I take my little device, and I touch it at various points. And by doing that, it figures out exactly where it is. Or sometimes I don't touch it at all and it just has a camera which is watching it. And with that, it figures out what's going on. You rotate it and boom, you have a perfect 3D model of your part. So these are becoming more and more precise than just physically creating our datums. Okay. So they're so precise that the difference between our simulated datums relative to these theoretical datums is typically insignificant for the tolerance values we're looking at. Um, just in most cases, it's not going to even matter. We're not going to have to worry about the variation between our theoretical datum and our simulated datum because we're using such precise tools. Now, the lower your tolerance that you need, the more precise tool you're going to need to simulate that datum and to measure it and that's where the costs begin to go up. You have to remember that. Okay, one thing I mentioned was that your material condition does matter. We have to set these material boundary modifiers. We can change how the datums are referenced. Normally, it's regardless of material boundary, and that just says, well, I go until I touch the surface, and I'm done. I'll just go until I touch to it, and I go. However, you can also keep your simulator at a fixed size or a fixed location by applying either the max material boundary or the least material boundary. And you'll then fix your simulator to those locations. In this case, though, it's really weird in the fact that that's usually inside of your part, which is a whole nother ballgame there. Okay, so um, regular features of size always have at least one material boundary. Surfaces and regular feature size have material boundaries only when we have a profile tolerance that's applied. What's profile tolerance? We'll come back to that, okay? We'll come back to that eventually. For now though, just realize that you usually will only see this, at least for a while, on features of size. That's a hole, a cylinder, a slot, a you know, two parallel planes, anything like that. Okay, so that's enough for this time. Just kind of introducing the whole material condition modifier thing, sorry, material boundary modifier thing. And next time, we have some more fun with that. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.